Hi friends, it's Reverend Laurie with Unity of Ocala on this beautiful September morning. It's Friday, September 9th. And September is the month that represents the power of order. James, son of Alpheus. And I've been thinking about the power of order in us. And at first you think of order of everything in its order everything in order, kind of sounds strict, taking orders. I wanted to look a little deeper, the power of order. It's a faculty in us, one of the 12 powers, those connections, attributes of God within us that we can activate to further our spiritual growth, further the opening of our consciousness, further our understanding of spirit and our purpose on this planet. I've been thinking about that a lot this week, our purpose, Dharma. But order has always, to me, kind of had a negative tone because I don't like to take orders. <laughs> I can be stubborn and independent. Although I like things orderly and neat, I don't necessarily want to be the one in charge of making them orderly and neat but I tend to feel more comfortable in an orderly setup as opposed to chaos. Um, I'm a painter and when I teach, I insist that my students have their artist desk, their place of painting orderly. I believe that a cluttered mind is the result of a cluttered desk. I think the freer and cleaner and more organized you are with your workspace, the easier and cleaner and more fluent the ideas will flow. So I have this natural tension with the word order, but thinking of it as the simple outflow of God's experience of creation. God is experiencing, experiencing creation as God is creating, you know, because God is in and through everything. So God is in and through me as he creates me. And there is this sense of order to all of that. There was a time I was to come into this space. There was a time I was to be in the place I am now. I can't make heads or tails of it most times, most things godly I cannot, but just knowing that there's this divine order in the coming together of the molecules in my body temple to make me who I am. It's a delightful sense of order. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about this more in a humanistic way, but it's kind of lovely. It's in Ecclesiastes 3, 1. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. And I would say in heaven, you know, these are loosely translated into Shakespearean English. So we have to take a leap <laughs> into the Aramaic and Jewish world. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant, a time to harvest, a time to kill, and a time to heal. And I look at these things metaphysically, a time to kill. I'm thinking a time to kill old dreams, old worn out desires, old thoughts. Time to let those go. A time to tear down <laughs> and a time to build up. A time to cry, a time to laugh, a time to grieve, a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to turn away. Each one of these sentences pack a powerful lesson. I'm gonna say that one again. A time to embrace, and a time to turn away. I don't always get that one. And that's an important one for all of us. A time to search and a time to quit searching. <laughs> a time to keep, a time to throw away. A time to tear, a time to mend. A time to be quiet, a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate. Hmm. A time for war and a time for peace. Metaphysically, kind of those all can be taken internally and applied directly to our own life. But as I watch, I moved my, my yard this morning and trimmed everything. 
and it's nice and neat now and I like the orderly look of it but I also like the weeds and the wildflowers that are growing around my blueberry bushes I'm just going to let them be for now I like some of the ragged edges where the water meets the seawall and there's a raggedness and a softness I kind of like that I like things orderly and, not, and neat but not too much not OCD much that takes the fun out of letting things be the way they were meant to be. Sometimes we get so caught up in what we should, what we shouldn't, what will they think? But what if I, yeah. So for me today, it's a time for me to set those societal norms aside. It's a time for me to go in and feel what it's time for rather than listening to what the world tells me it's time for. I wanna hear and hear where God is. Is it a time to heal, a time to move, a time to stop, a time to cast, a time to pull in? Just gonna let the natural order of the divine within me make the decisions of what is the time for, for me. Now the nice poem, in Susceptible to Light. I've stuck with this author for a long time now and I just can't get enough of her. I hope she comes to Florida so she can come talk, talk at our church. She's a delightful writer. This is called The Sacred Wild Barrel. Oh world, I've been trying to convince you of my sanity for far too long trying to hold it all together, play the part. Oh, that stings. I'm ready for the sacred undoing. I'm ready to give up the game. I'm delighted to say I've lost. Here is my raw naked heart. My soul is ready to strip down and streak through social conventions. I'm tired of pretending with you that I'm okay with anything short of the sweetest, most tender intimacy. I'm unsigning my name from these social contracts, enabling extreme blandness and terrible distance from our hearts. Mm. Come closer and I will kiss your face. Come closer and I will offer you every jewel in my soul. Come closer still, and I'll delightedly give you my very life. And then rummage through my closets to see what else I have in there for you. Friend, it doesn't take much to destroy social norms. All it really takes is to crack open the sacred wild barrel of love in your chest and offer it to whomsoever might pass by. Ah, <sighs> so I'm, it's time to go within and see what time it is for you. What time are you, it is time for you to let go. Perhaps it's time for you to hang on. It's a time for you to cast stones, to gather stones to sow, to harvest, to be quiet, to speak out. You will know, go within, don't pay attention to the noise of the world. All you need to listen to is this voice in your heart, the wisest voice that any of us will ever have. Uh, join me on Sunday. We're gonna talk a little bit about our purpose in life, that seventh spiritual step to spiritual success dharma our purpose in life and we're also going to talk a little bit about rosh Hashan, that is the prelude the awakening to the new year and it is filled with metaphysical wonder and awe so join join us join us it's delicious have a fabulous day god loves you i love you bye <laughs>